Now, read a couple of stories today, saw one in uh, the Wall Street Journal and then Bloomberg and uh, some other source today about inflation and bonds. <clears throat> Nobody really wants to buy our treasury bills. Nobody wants to buy our debt, it seems, except for the Fed. So how high will inflation go? Peter Schiff, president of Euro Pacific Capital and author of Crash Proof, How to uh, Profit from the Economic Collapse, and joining us from phone from Budapest, Hungary, is Mark Faber. He is the editor and publish, uh, publisher of the Gloom, Doom, and Boom Report. That is really happy. First of all, Peter, let me start with you. You were on my show an awful lot over at uh, the other network, and I appreciate it because you were one of the only people that saw this coming and had the cojones to say it. And I think you've been wrong by a lot of people in the media because they say, well, look at, look at the investments that he made last year, and it was blah, 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 blah. Timing is everything. They were looking at some of the things that you had done and, and said, well, see, but timing is everything, is it not? Well, I mean, I'm a long-term investor. All they were doing is taking a snapshot of how some of my accounts performed uh, in the second half of 2008. They forgot about how they did for the eight years prior to that. And, of course, they haven't even looked at what's happened in 2009, okay. uh, which has pretty much reversed most of what happened in 2008. Okay. I, I want to get both of you guys on because this is like, I mean, this is like the dynamic duo of death. If you're looking for a happy place in the economy, you're not going to get it from these two guys right now. Uh, let, me go to, uh, let me go to Mark Faber in, in uh, Budapest. Mark, I heard you uh, say that you now believe it is 100% guaranteed that we are going to have hyperinflation like Zimbabwe. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> that's not happy. Okay, how long before that happens? I mean, they're buying, you work all day and you can't afford a loaf of bread in Zimbabwe. Uh, well, the thing is like this... Uh... Basically, in America, there is a mindset that deflation is bad. I'd have to point out that the entire 19th century in the U.S., during which the U.S. had very strong growth and huge gains in real incomes, was a deflationary century. But that's the view is that deflation is bad and inflation is good. Let me just read you one sentence by Ken Rogoff. He's a Harvard professor. I'm advocating 6% inflation for at least a couple of years. It would ameliorate the debt bump and help us work through the deleveraging process. Well, if inflation is now, say, around 1.5% to 2% and goes to 6%, how do you stop it at 6%? Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you With can't. the huge deficits we have, the Fed will be reluctant to increase interest rates. Okay. You know, it's like, it's like saying, you know, you're just going to get a little bit pregnant. It doesn't work. But, you know, the problem is I, I, I agree that we will have hyperinflation if we don't change our current policy. Hyperinflation is not 1970s inflation. No, that's just that's high just inflation. That's really bad inflation. And I don't think it's, it's, it's for sure. I think it's a worst-case scenario. But if we don't change our present policy, that's what we're going to have. Because quantitative easing is inflation. And when the government prints money to buy bonds, the minute they do that, they debase the dollar and they make all the bonds they don't buy less valuable. So now everybody wants to sell them. So the more money the Fed prints to buy bonds, the more bonds they have to buy. And eventually the only buyer left is the, is the Federal Reserve. Okay. And at some point, the government has to stop this, and, and, and we have to take the serious recession that we're so desperately trying to avoid. Okay, so Mark, why do you say it's 100 percent? I mean, Zimbabwe, for the love of Pete, why do you say that's 100 well, percent? I'm not sure that it will go to the rate of Zimbabwe, but it will go to very high rate. You only look, have to look at the three major policymakers in economics in the U.S., Larry Summers, Tim Geithner, and Ben Bernanke. They've never worked in the private sector. They don't know what a balance sheet is, basically, of a household that obtains a salary, spends, and then has some money left Peter, for savings. Peter, does this, does this make, when, when California bellies up to the bar, and there's a lot of states that are on, their, on, on that path, they belly up to the bar, that's not going to make anybody more responsible. Oh, no. I mean, first of all, I mean, he should say what, what Ford said to New York, drop dead. I mean, the, the last thing we want to do is bail out California, because California needs to make serious cuts in its budget. And if we, if we guarantee their debt, then we, they don't have to do it. And if we do that, not only do we send 
send a message to California that you can keep on being irresponsible, but now we've got to bail out all the other states. Yeah. And of course, what about the states that have balanced budgets right now? They're going to feel like okay. idiots. Okay. They're going to want to have deficits so they can get a bailout. Peter, I appreciate you being on. Mark, before I cut you loose, will, will you answer the question, how long do you think we have? Before we have to, we, the, before it's like, well, too late. Well, I think it's already too late now if we define inflation as uh, the increase in the quantity of money and debt, then obviously starting with the 1980s, uh, the debt to GDP in the U.S. went from 130 percent to now 370 percent, and that excludes mm -hmm. The contingent liabilities arising from Social right. Security yeah, you know, and Medicare. E right. Even if we don't have the hyperinflation, under the best case scenario, we're still going to have high inflation, much right, higher right. than the 1970s. There's no way out of that. Okay. All right. I mean, let me ask you. You know Mark, right? I know him, you know yes. Mark. Is he faking the accent? No, no, that's, that's it. Really? Because that's, I mean, that like adds to the Dr. Doom huh? thing. Yeah, well, it helps him with the ladies. He like gets, he like gets <laughs> off. Well, He's that's like, very important. <laughs> You get off, Mark. I swear you get off TV and you're like, yeah, that was a good interview. I decided to throw in the spooky, uh, spooky accent. Thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate it, Peter. It's we'll be my pleasure.